Anything going on in the news? Um, news wise, I would say uh, we talked so much about Secure Act last time, but that did end up getting signed. So that was a pretty big deal. Um, so Biden did sign that. Um, I want to say the 29th or may even have been the 30th. So that is that is in effect as we speak now. So it's uh, it's pretty significant. Um, it's funny when you scroll for me, when I scroll through LinkedIn, that's like all it is. It's like, I can't even go on LinkedIn. Everybody's talking about secure act too. So I assume that everybody in the world knows about it, but that's not obviously the case. But, um, I was on a, did a zoom call this morning with a, with a networking group, same sort of thing. And I was writing down some notes ahead of time. I'm like, this is, you don't want to sound like, like we said before, like salesy or like it's a dirty word, but so I'm on this call and I'm like, listen, everybody in Connecticut with five or more employees has to have a plan by March 30th. OK, you just have a tax act that was passed that gives you 100 percent tax credits, not tax deduction, tax credits, meaning it doesn't cost the company anything. And you have automatic enrollment now, which is the law. So all your employees get signed up, whether they want to or not. You don't have to chase forms. Then if they want to opt out, they opt out. So there's very little labor, there's no cost, and you have to do it anyway. So it's like, you know, and there was probably 10 businesses on the call and I don't know, maybe, maybe half of them have, but I mean, if it's like all five of them that didn't have plans should have like called me right after they didn't, but it's like, you know, you're, you're trying to help people and you're trying to do the right thing. And you're like, I'm serving this up to you on a platter. Like, here's, here's what you have to do. And, um, and the response was minimal so far. We'll see. It's only a couple hours ago. But so, um, how many how many pages were in that in that uh, legislation? Uh, about forty one hundred. About four thousand yes. four thousand pages in that legislation. Yeah. The, the problem, and I'm going to preach a little bit, and I'm gonna, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Yeah. But you know, there's so there's so many laws. No. So so many laws. Um, I think it's clear, uh, you know, we've seen this with, um, you know, the, the president's taxes were supposed to be audited um, during, you know, every, every president every year is supposed to have their taxes audited. Trump's taxes just weren't being audited, I think, two of his four years. Um, there, you know, there's so it's like the government writes the laws, but the government, the onus is on the government to to enforce the laws. And. Um, enforcement seems to be really nebulous right now. I mean, just driving down the road, like, you know, I don't mean, I don't want to go down this road ne necessarily, <laughs> but you know, it's like, I drive the speed limit for a lot of reasons because a, I like to hit cruise control. I like to get in the right lane and just kind of like coast, you know, kind of float, you know, yeah. but like I'm doing the speed limit set on cruise and I'm getting run over by everybody, you know? So, you know, I don't want to, what, what am I trying to say? You know, so like the laws, like businesses of five and, and more need to have a retirement plan. You need to do with this. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. But like, you know, it's, it's, um, I'm not justifying, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, you know, there isn't like, the urgency that you feel like there should be, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's like HIPAA, you know, <clears throat> you know, are you familiar with HIPAA? Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah. So HIPAA, you know, came out what, 10, 10 or more years ago or whatever. And it was, it was a huge, and it still is a huge, um, sale vehicle for com companies like mine, because we, um, help our health and, uh, health care clients, um, stay compliant with mm -hmm. HIPAA. Um, but we're starting to see like a lot of like meh meh about it you know um like we we see a lot of clients that are like or you know prospects or whatever and saying like what you're doing right now is not hipaa compliant by a lot like this is right. not only is this not hipaa compliant but this is like problematic for your business and again the business owner is imperative you know like they're whether that's not in the budget or they're just they have 30 other things to do like being a small business owner is, you know, you are, you are literally wearing all the hats. You're the bookkeeper, you're the salesperson, you're the business development, you're the HR manager, you're the, you know, um, you know, all these things. So I don't know what I'm, what, what am I saying? <laughs> you're, you're saying, although it's, it's something that's at the top of my plate, it's not at the top of small business owners plate because they have so much going on. 
and I don't want to, I don't want to issue any cop outs. I, I'm just, I guess <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, you know, I guess I'm framing the reality of like, yeah, write your laws and, 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 and go for it. But it's like, there's, there's got, there's just, there's the small business owner has so many burdens, so many burdens. And, and for whatever reason through, whether it's a lack of financial literacy or maybe because of the financial complexity of things like a benefits package and for and a retirement plan plans. And it's like, well, you've got the IRA and then you got the Roth IRA and it's like, it's, it's tax going in, it's tax coming out, it's tax deferred, it's tax deductible. You know, I used to like this. Do you remember, do you remember, um, I don't even remember if he was a Democrat or Republican. I think he's a Republican, but remember Herman Cain when he was running sure. Herman Cain? Yeah. You remember nine, his nine, plat- nine. yeah, his platform was 999. Do you remember what the nines were? What the nines were? It was, uh, yeah, a sales tax and income tax and then a, what a, I don't remember the third. Property tax or something maybe. E, but, yeah. Uh, do you remember what the joke was behind that? No. That, that he stole his tax plan from Sims because that was like the default when you built Sim City when you went in. It was, <laughs> it was 999. <laughs> and you, you could adjust those to, to create your city. Yeah, I that hope was that's joke. true. I really do hope that's true. Yeah. And anecdotally, we hear, um, you know, Europeans, they it, they do their taxes on a postcard and, and the government does the math for them, you mm-hmm. know. Um, we hear that Trump's tax returns are just released and the guy hasn't paid ta- taxes in the last six years or something, you know, and I'm not making a case for anything except maybe my case is like, uh, America like lives in this like way over bureaucratic realm, you know, right. and I don't want to put any accountants out of business, but at the same time, like if you want everybody to do their taxes and do them well, like make it easier, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah. I don't know. And then, and then I did, I, I read some, you guys know that I'm libertarian leaning and in certainly more when I was um, in my twenties, I was doing some reading and um, I think it was Ron, uh, Ron, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, um, or maybe some some contemporary in his circle was saying like, you know, ta- taxation really should occur at the spending, not at the earning, you know? And, mm-hmm. um, and what if, uh, you know, all of taxes just were incurred at the moment of transaction and it was in a form of sales tax, you know? Yeah. Maybe the sales tax goes up. <clears throat> um, you know, maybe you have a state tax and a, and a federal tax and, and the collective is, you know, 12% on every transaction or whatever. But like, what if like, then you have no other taxes, mm-hmm. y- you know? Um, yeah. I don't know. What do you feel about all that stuff? Uh, if I, if I could drop the tax code now, I think we'd start it. I like the idea of a one singular spot. I think it's easier to do. I'd rather do it on the net worth side. So to have an income based tax system, um, I don't think makes a ton of sense because it's not necessarily a reflection of an entity's or a person's ability to pay. So I think if you had a net worth based system where it's just like, all right, one page, write down all your assets and everybody has to pay, you know, whatever that number is, even if you did it on a sliding scale, but you know, all your, how does that account for, how does that account for equities and assets appreciating and depreciating? So for example, the ultra wealthy, and this is a question I've had floating and and maybe this is our show subject or so show title today. But I was like, well, you know, they want to tax the billionaires, but the billionaires are only billionaires on paper. And what does that mean? That And for for anybody not doing any stock investing, it literally means they they hold ownership shares of a company, publicly traded company. And the market at that time says that share is worth, you know, what it's worth. So then if you times the amount of shares they have times what the current or present is it present market value, yeah. uh, I guess. Um, then you're like, wow, you're worth this much money. But as we see like Tesla lost 60 or 75% of their value uh, in the last 12 months. So like what, how does that work? It's under, under my system. So it would be, you wouldn't necessarily be accredited for the depreciation. It's just one year you would have a net worth of whatever. And then if the market went down, you'd have a net worth of, of, you know, oh, I see. Less. Okay. So of, of yeah. your holdings every yeah. year per annum, you would just be taxed on yeah. a percentage of the net worth. Right. 
and you'd have no you'd have no iras 401ks you know annuities all that sort of stuff it's like all right you want to get stock go buy it just put it in an account just at the end of the year write on write down how much you have or maybe the you know the companies report that direct and then you just pay a you know and you put your 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 houses on there you know maybe your your cars and then but uh, then doesn't that create an environment where like what if you're not cash income producing and you're net like you you have to start selling your assets in order to pay the tax yeah i guess so i mean it wouldn't be that it wouldn't be that much i mean if you're you've probably so if your net worth is a million dollars and we're taxing it i don't know i did spreadsheet it out and back into the number at one point it was it was not that but, high but just you're basing it on your net worth and yeah if you had to sell i mean people have to sell stocks now sometimes to cover cover taxes so it wouldn't be the yeah worst. but that might be because of the, the you don't know what their cash is coming or going but in your in a model where you're being taxed on your net worth in a way then you don't get to own anything i mean eventually you i i don't I, i'm not trying to be hyperbolic i'm trying to yeah. say like well i mean can't you just get to the point where you own your house I mean, I guess you do have property taxes and if after and that does that is an erosion tax, I guess. So I guess that would make sense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your your assets are likely to going to be appreciate faster than the taxes. You know, well, it's hopefully. not a system where you're. Yeah. I mean, the system wouldn't be built. Obviously, there's I think that's that would be a better starting point um, mm. than I mean, obviously, you'd have to. You know, it's not going to be a one page tax code, but it certainly be certainly be a lot easier than what you have now. I mean, the, the knock on a system like that is, well, people would people would hide assets or they'd bury money in there. But it, I think it's far easier to hide income tax and do those sort of shenanigans than it is. Well, to, I mean, it certainly you know. adds a cost. And the the, the cost, I mean, 83,000 IRS agents. Is that what, what was what was being hired? How many? Yeah. Agents, how many was yeah. that? It was, it was like tens of thousands, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. You know, um, and if you just had a simpler tax code, you, you would negate needing to hire tens of thousands of IRS agents that are pouring over this convoluted, you mm -hmm. know, and I, I, I don't want to like preach to the choir, I guess, because everybody, everybody's probably anybody who's made it this far is probably rolling their eyes like, yeah, we get it, Eric, like the US tax code sucks, but like, but yet everybody kind of seems okay with the, the status quo, you, you know, it's like, it's, it's well, how we've yeah. been doing it. It's how we've always done it. And by gosh, it's how we're going to do it, you know? And, uh, it's like daylight savings time, you know, can we just, yeah, that's changing. It is. There is, there is a movement of change. There is a, there is a hope for change. I, I, I just hope that, you know, yeah, it would be nice to just go to, yeah, like a flat, flat sales tax and and maybe maybe that's the solution maybe a flat net income tax you know you just yeah net up. worth tax yeah put all your assets down net worth yeah yeah i mean that way that i mean that what that solves the problem for is i mean you you could have somebody that's that's got a billion dollars of net worth but they have no income and they pay no taxes you know i mean that's to me that's ridiculous i mean that's right i don't fault them i mean they're they're playing the game that's the rules of the game that have been presented to them but you know, and when you get on that scale, you can you can borrow against your assets, and if you need to spend money, you do that, and um, it doesn't. You know, borrowing doesn't count as income and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, the income tax does seem to just hit the little guy, doesn't it? Is yeah, that, yeah. I mean, in a in a or the middle class. Yeah, and it attacks you know production and 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 that sort of stuff. So you'd have uh, so you had total tax receipts of about five trillion. And you've got a household net worth of 150 trillion. If I'm reading that quickly here. So He's doing math, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. So it's just He's pulling from, data. Uh, let's from, pull some data. If I'm reading all the, the numbers correctly. So yeah, that is about the number. If you paid 3% of your net worth. So, um, you know, think about that. If you would prefer you that, that again. Isn't it? So if everybody paid about 3% of their net worth, you'd end up with the same tax receipts. So I'm going to, I'm going to do those just, numbers after we hang up and see. Yeah. And see if you'd prefer to prefer to do that or not. And, but, and just, just have it be a known quantity, right? Just, yeah. You know what your house is worth. They know what, you know what your brokerage assets are. They could be, you know, maybe it's just reported on that again. You get, there's but now, ways but to now raise how, your hand and, and then, yeah. how about the non homeowners and the non investors and well, you, you got half the country that doesn't pay any income tax now. 
So right. you'd end up with half the com- country that has a negative net worth and may not pay a net worth tax. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and so if there's, I mean, so if we're sensitive to the low earners and uh, anyways, then the low earners and, uh, and, and those not accumulating wealth in, in that sense are, would be uh, ex- exempt. Yeah. They just wouldn't necessarily be exempt. They just don't have anything to pay on. It's like somebody now with no income, you know, they just file and say, I have no income. You would just file and say, I have no assets, no assets, no assets. Right. I mean, you, if you had a car, um, would you, would you, would you count, would you sum up, uh, uh property, your couch, your TV? Yeah. I mean, that's, you'd have to decide how, how granular you want to get with it. And that's, that's where people poke holes in it. They say, well, I just buy a, you know, um, I'd go out and buy a, a $20 million painting or something. And, you know, so it, you know, that's how people think that they would get around it. But nine, 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 nine yeah. percent sales tax, nine, no, nine percent uh what state sales well i guess you wouldn't dictate this what the state wants to do but nine percent property tax nine percent income tax i don't know Some yeah the, it was simple. uh nine percent personal income tax nine percent federal sales tax and nine percent corporate tax that was oh that was herman Keynes. yeah right right yeah hopefully hopefully something happens simpler i can't imagine why it stays the way it is it just so in fact the only reason why i think it probably stays the same is because so many people are abusing the, the system and um or just benefiting from abusing it i don't know yeah i mean ab- abusing it i mean you have both sides of it you have the legal side and you have the illegal side of it um but again if it's up in for interpretation yeah it, right. it's self-reporting you know what i mean it's like it's self you know and t- it's like it, it's illegal it's legal until it's illegal you know what i mean right yeah. Um, the guidance is there and whatever. So anyways, good, good talk. What's our headline? What's our title for the show today? Well, just, uh, just for fun. I did, I did pull up, pull up this, this article, as I mentioned, this was, um, Herman Cain's 999 from Sim City. This was, uh, that was kind of the joke back in the day is that, that his tax plan was based on the default tax rates of Sim City. That's so funny. Uh, yeah. I remember that. I joke love that, that so, at the time. so much. I didn't, I, I didn't see that, but that is so funny. Yeah. But Hey, I mean, the, 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 arg- the argument is maybe taxes should be as simple as a video game. Yeah. Or you at know? least start there, you know, but yeah. you know, to, to keep the tax code we have now and just keep adding it, adding it, adding to it rather than just scrap the whole thing then, and then eventually get it back up to, you know, what it needs to be to collect the revenue but yeah the problem with that is it, it, there's so many special interests that if you yeah. if you if you kind of clean sheet something like the tax code you end up mm-hmm. pissing off everybody mm-hmm. you know and uh you know because we're you know the democratic process and you're beholden to your the, the politicians are beholden to the constituents you know there's the system's designed not to piss everybody off uh, sw- right. uh in a sweeping kind of way um and unfortunately, it's designed to be overly complex so that people don't understand it or don't know how to fix it or, you know, think that it's over their head, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a that's a wrap for today, uh, unless you got anything else. I don't yeah. I think I have any news that I wanted to cover. Um, any Anything on chat GPT you want to talk about? Any any AI head, headlines? I, no, Did we I exhaust that? that? I, no. I, yeah, I think we, we exhausted that. Um, I think it's, I think it's going to continue to be a big story. We were kicking around the idea of throwing out a couple of predictions for this year. Oh so yeah. You want to do a prediction like show? Right, prediction. I guess I didn't, uh, I didn't have, I don't have a ton of predictions and, and one of my w- one is our, already starting already, but, um, I, I, I think there's going to be some, some struggles ahead for, for Tesla and, and Elon Musk. I think as it gets the stock got creamed yesterday and it's a, 52 week lows. So it's not like I'm going out on, on a ledge here, but I think his competition heats up for him and people start to view what he's doing as a little bit more of a car company than a technology company. I think that changes the valuation quite a bit. And I think his, his public uh, persona is going to make people less interested in buying cars from him to some extent, um, whether that's right or wrong, but 
there's just there'll be some people shopping for evs it'll just simply say that guy creeps me out or i don't like what he's doing or whatever and i think that may hurt business a little bit i don't know if it's going to be something that's uh you know that sort of cascades through that uh i don't know the intricacies of if he's you know borrowed against his tesla stock there's some sort of you know people are con maybe concerned about that that he might be over leveraged and you know he's able to work through at certain valuations but if if tesla was valued like gm or ford um then he he might have some other financial issues that could cascade a little bit but so uh, let's so so put so put that in a can uh, or yeah. on one one line what is your prediction tesla uh, stock gets uh, continues a decline elon yeah outdated. yeah and i think it's i think uh the the overextension of of elon maybe financially and personally uh, create some, some unneeded headwinds for Tesla, I guess would be my, my that, headlines. that's, that's, that's a, that's a safe prediction. Because yeah. It's open, I mean, it, it's open, right? it sounded Sorry. a little bit better a, a week ago. I mean, since well, let's, let's, let's boil it down. down. You, let, the, you, do you think the Tesla stock continues to decline? What, what are they, tra where is it trading at right now? Uh, let's see. It's 120 today. or 170 something. And here's our, our, our show headline predict, yeah. predictions for the no, show. For the I'm trying year. to stay away from a specific stock calls. I mean, it's, up, it's at 111 now. Oh, wow. Uh, it's at 111. So generally, you think it continues to decline by the end of next year or this year? I, if I had to guess higher or lower, I'd say lower in a year. Yeah, I would. Okay. And then um, uh, Elon's employment as CEO of Tesla. Um, he's, he's CEO of Tesla by the end of this no, year or no? No, no. He's, okay. I think he's smart enough to hire somebody. And are you making are you making any other more dramatic uh, predictions as far as like the success or failure of Tesla? Um, no, but I just think it's it's lost some of the bloom off its rose, so to speak. Or you know, it was a Hollywood darling for a while. I don't think it's going to be anymore. Um, so so we'll see what other competitors step up and do you uh, when, do, when do you want to kind of go through all your year predictions and then i and then mine or do you want me to well go what what what, what, what triggered you you mentioned the the chat B, gbt stuff well I, I want to respond to you i want to i want to make yeah go ahead yeah of, of tesla and elon so yeah. so um tesla was grossly overvalued yes grossly overvalued um it, in the traditional sense right Pri um uh, stock value to uh in relation to price to earnings ratio they were like way out of whack right. you know and i haven't i haven't had any i haven't seen any analysis of what their current stock value is in com in the comparison of the traditional are you able to make that um analysis on the fly here uh, well, so so right now, even with the dramatic decline, it's at a, a PE of price to earnings ratio of thirty four. Can we you, bring Can we bring your screen on or no? Uh, yeah. And we don't have we. Nathan's going to chop this up, so we don't have to worry about going long. I but I, this is. Uh, yeah. So so GM, if you look at a, a price to earnings of five, you know, so that's more traditional for for an automaker, if right? If we look at Ford, uh, you got a PE of five. Okay, you know? so now show us Tesla. Tesla is going to be around thirty-four. Price to earnings ratio of thirty-three. So they're still at thirty-three, yeah. and that's at its present value. Like, I wonder could could you what could you do the calculate can you does the chart will the chart give you any history history on when it was at like 700 well, well you've got a 52 week high of 400 so and the earnings multiple hasn't changed that much so you got to figure that the pe was probably about 120 at its peak. yeah so like they were out of whack right i mean the, the valuation of tesla stock is out of whack it's still out of whack those stock splits that they did just he can he did that um i don't know if he did that with reckless abandon or what but um those stock splits in, in, induced more of that retail buying um so now to come to 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 make my prediction in response to your well i don't want to say in response to yours i the tesla prediction for the year uh stock price will it go up again or will it go down um I think the pigs are getting slaughtered. You, you know, I think I'm gonna. I'm, I think I'm gonna join you and say that the price stays flat or continues to go down. 
Although I think that Tesla is not a traditional car company. I think they've proven that they're not a traditional car company. So the question is, you know, how many companies are they in one? You know, so they Mm -hmm. are a car, they are a car company. They are an energy company uh, with their batteries and their solar. Yep. Um, What other interests do they do? I know they're trying to get into the robotics. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what's a traditional price to earnings ratio for like a power company? Or, or like Sunrun, for example. Yeah, I mean, right? probably 10, 12, something like that. Okay. So, uh, so peak P, uh, price to earnings ratio for Tesla was uh, about 1,400 in January <laughs> oh of 2021. Yeah. Um, so even if you go back, if you go back one year, uh, one year, you're still at, at 200 price to earnings. Now you're yeah. at 33. Yeah, they're so out of way. Multiple. So my, my prediction, I guess I'll just get simple on this. I, they're, they're more than one, they're more than a car company. That's for sure. I think, Mm -hmm. I think any analyst have used them as a car company. And I say this not with rose, rose tinted glasses. They are producing energy products in, you know, Mm -hmm. and car companies are not producing energy products. Um, although Ford, I think, I think, um, Jim Farley recognizes that they can be more than a car company. Um, you know, uh, all these guys need to realize is that they're a platform company. The cars can be an energy plat, uh, energy comp, uh, platform. So they can be an energy company, start plugging these things into the grid. They're going to do load balancing. Like right now I have a gas powered generator and I would love my net. It, my, and I drive a 14 year old vehicle and I'm waiting for my first EV purchase. Um, and Tesla doesn't do um, vehicle to grid. So the vehicle can't be used as a house battery. And that's something that I really want. Hmm. For Jim Farley recognized that with the Ford Lightning, you could plug your Ford Lightning into your house and it can lo- it can battery back up your entire house, act as a generator. Yeah. And I think that's really compelling. So um, will Tesla, you know, they tell they sell the Tesla power walls, but will they turn on vehicle to grid? Well, you know, so I think I'm going to say the price almost stays flat because I think it's overvalued as a car company, but I think it's appropriately valued as a, as a conglomerate, a, a power, an energy company and a car company. I think they're going to continue to ramp up. They're going to get the, the, the semi out. They're going to get the, the they're going to get their first units of this, the cyber truck out. Mm-hmm. Um, they did lose that kind of, they're, they're coming out of the honeymoon phase for sure. You know, they, the, the, the leftists loved him, the right, the, the left, right loved him, the right loved him, but he's definitely alienating himself from, from the left for sure. Um, will it be enough for them to say, will, will, will Tesla be, you know, will that, will it become factioned, you know, where, um, you know, GM used to be a real, um, right leaning company still kind of is, you know, like when you see a, when you see the, the Chevy bow tie, you know, on a be- emblem on the back of a car, like to me, it's just like, yeah, you're, you're Republican. It just feels very, very <laughs> like that. Um, except for the Tahoes that roll around here. Yeah. yeah. The, um, so anyways, I think this, I, I'm going to predict that the Tesla stock stays flat, but doesn't, ta- it doesn't crater because I think they've got the earnings to show for it. And I, and I think they've got the manufacturing runway to continue that. And I think, I think they've got still enough demand for their product. Um, will their robot, um, come out and be useful no i don't think so will their full self-driving software um allow you to go full autonomy hands-free um i still don't think they get it done in this year although i think with chat chat gpt has shown us that ai can all of a sudden flip on overnight and it can be available overnight um, I'm a little surprised I, that maybe like their software doesn't feel like a chat GPT to me. Um, it doesn't feel like they've, they've got that like web of, you know, when you talk to chat GPT, it's like, it's, it's conversational. It's, it's, it's really bizarre, you know, um, can they tap that kind of technology and really kind of give the software this awareness that it needs to just operate on city mm-hmm. streets with other humans? I don't know. Um, I feel like it could happen overnight, but does it happen this year? I think, and I think it does happen, but I don't know for Tesla. Well, yeah. And the hurdles for there might be regulatory, <clears throat> might be a while before the, you know, they may have the systems in place, but they'd have to get regulatory approval and how do we police this stuff and, and all that. We've 
talked about before. Do you still consider them the leader in autonomous vehicles? And I never software? have. I okay. never. I never viewed them as the leader. I'm G, uh, GM's Cruise and Google's Waymo. They're already mm -hmm. operating self-driving taxis on city street. Yeah. So that that to me is, is leadership. That you know, uh, there's an Israeli company called Mobileye that um, Tesla used to use for their vision technology and things, and they're putting out some compelling uh, content to showcase their platform, their hardware seller and software seller. So I think they're trying to lease lease their software to companies, um, and that's compelling. So I don't view Tesla as a leader, except that I think they might be onto something about using vision for their AI um, okay. rather than, than LIDAR and radar. So I don't know. Um, so anyways, that's a lot of, a lot of meat on that bone, but Tesla uh, is Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla by the end of this year. I'm going to say he is, I, I don't think he's ready to give that control away, especially with the stock price um, cratering like it did. I think he needs to have control of that. Does he stay at, does he stay at Twitter? I'm going to say maybe not. I think, yeah, I think he leaves Twitter. Yeah. Um, urban air mobility doesn't doesn't come online this year either uh, as much as i want it to <clears throat> um i don't know what other what other sectors uh what happens in crypto oh that yeah i i don't even want to wager a guess on there i i i think actually you know bitcoin's done well even with all the sbf stuff so i wouldn't be surprised to see a higher in a year that wouldn't i wouldn't yeah. be surprised to see a back over twenty thousand. I think it sort of uh, shook out all the weak hands, as they as as they say. I think the people right. that are in it now are probably in it for for the long term, or there's that fundamental base in there that's either owned by um, that's owned by people who won't be easily spooked and forced to sell. Yeah, I mean, um, crypt crypto is providing a service to those who are using it. So, I mean, it is a currency to those using it as a currency mm -hmm. and and as an investment vehicle for those who are trying to use it as an investment vehicle. Like I said, the pigs got slaughtered. So, um, yeah, I don't think crypto goes anywhere. Yeah. And the only question is, does it become so regulated that it sort of defeats the purpose of it to begin with? You know, does it? And can it be regulated? I mean, the the, the black market continues to, will continue to wield it, um, you know, rogue nations and things like that. Anyways, um, I know that we're running long, but uh, any other Hail Mary predictions? What do we... Mm. Nah, I don't know. I think that's that's probably it for now. I think that's uh, what do you got prediction wise? I think I think I just I think I just build my guts here. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to think. You know, the things mo mobility, self driving. I think Cruise and GM, uh, Cruise and Waymo continue to roll out. Maybe another few more cities. Um, Chat GPT. I think maybe comes to or should be coming to the Amazon Echoes and the smart speakers. Like that is. That conversationality is is exactly what these speakers needed um, to these smart assistants. So mm -hmm. hopefully they tap that. Um, does Google release a new tab and give you free, you know, uh, a, a new way to search um, and get information back? Um, I don't know. So it's like it's almost like does twenty does we're in twenty three. So does twenty is twenty three a, a coast year, or mm -hmm. is it a, is it a um, innovation year? Yeah, um, they're talking about that with. Uh... The CES, the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, that if uh, they say it's kind of going to be a, a down year, that it's transitioned a lot to um, like the transportation sector. Mobility. It's no longer about like the personal gadgets and the hottest TV and all that sort of stuff because all that sort of TV's of course. Well, yeah, TV's a mature product. You know, um, we don't need much more than an 8K TV. You know, because resolution, the way the way it works, you sit close enough to a TV, 4K, 8K, and so, yeah, I mean, that's stuff. cell phones. It can only be, you know, it's a mature product. You can't really change that form factor anymore. Mm -hmm. I hope the smart glasses um, industry takes off. I'd love to just put glasses on and have a heads up display. So I'm not always like doing that neck, the cell phone neck. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've talked about, I'm so tired of the cell phone neck. That's why I got the watch. So I can try to look at more alerts on, like this rather than the cell phone neck. I, right. So I'm hoping that comes, but does that come this year? I, I don't know. I, I I don't think so. It might this this might be a coast year? So I don't. You know, urban air mobility. I don't think comes to market. Self full full self driving uh, robo taxis. I don't think comes to market. I don't think Elon Musk's a uh, robot comes to market. Um, so we this might be a gap year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and nothing new with the metaverse. You don't see yourself opening up a a storefront there. 
No, because again, the form factor, <clears throat> we have an Oculus and the form factor is too clumsy. My kids can't yeah. use it. It's heavy. The battery life, it's, it's all that stuff has to continue to shrink. The resolution uh -huh. has to continue to go up. Um, you know, does Apple release their, their, their headset this year? I, I, I can't, the mock-ups, the fan art that they've mocked up for the Apple head, VR headset. I, I can't imagine Apple wanting to get into that market because it's, it's, it's just not good enough. There's no, there's not enough value there, you, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't do some sort of combination product where you slide your phone in and, and use it that way. It doesn't feel Apple-y to me, right? Yeah. It doesn't, you know what feels Apple-y to me? Like, like I'm talking about those heads up glasses, mm -hmm. like some pass through glasses that you can get prescription or not that has like a screen on it that gives yeah. you information, useful, useful information where like, it, you don't feel ugly you don't feel clumsy you don't feel weighted down right. you know um so I, I could be wrong and you know it's a tim cook's apple now so and we've seen uh he's done a number he's released a number of products that people like they, they've said that steve jobs would never have a a, a a camera bump you know that when they when when camera bumps came out on iphones oh yeah like, steve jobs would never have set, released a product with a camera bump you know um yeah so i don't know it's fun, fun, yeah. fun to see, fun to guess. Sure is. So I think that's a wrap for the day, unless you got anything else. No, nope, I think that's good. All right, buddy. Have a happy new year and uh, we'll see you on the next one. All right. We'll see you.